Okay, so obviously this week we're going to talk about coaching horns. Now these are nothing special. They're not wonderful coat. I've got some real nice ones. But these are just everyday things, you know, that would have been. Um, this one, for instance, I know about this, this horn. This was a postman's. Nothing to do with coaching at all. A post, postman's horn. A lot of these mouthpieces here, people were much smaller back then, so hence the mouthpieces are a lot less. And if you get one with a German silver mouthpiece, it's quite a bit different than mouthpiece, and you can blow it better. But like these one here, that would let you know, you know, that the post was in. Um, so a post boy with a, with a couple of sacks over a pony would we'll be dropping off post and people could come and collect when you give it a blast. But I know that because I know the history of this one, but it wasn't anything special. It was just one. So obviously when you had it on a pony and you was carrying it, you didn't want a great big long thing, did you? Just like that. Why they never had one like a trumpet, what they call a bent one, I don't know. But uh, I have seen pictures, a uh, couple of oil paintings that... Uh, uh, that show a, a post boy riding with a, with a you know, like a, a cornet, you know, like, um, so you take the same tube and you bend it round and round, no keys on it, just bent round and round, like a bugle, was what it would be. Um, this one here is not old, you know, but it's, uh, it's not of any great age at all, and it's a very cheap, you can tell certain things like when you get a genuine old one they would seam it down obviously they've got to roll it down but they would never do that or very rarely put a join in there you can see a slight join in this one um, this one very very small mouthpiece hard to play you know quite hard to play because as I say people were much smaller then so obviously the, the stature of people if you look at old coaching uniforms, livery, very, very tiny. You put them on a child these days, you know, a, a, a slender teenager, and it would be a man's coaching outfit. This one I'm going to have repaired um, because I like this one very much, and it's just a shame, really. This is ribbed to make it stronger. That's the only reason. But it's the usual thing that happens to them. They're dropped, and all the end is damaged. But this will make a lovely one. I'm going to get it done. There is a fella that still works on these and he'll tease all that back out. He won't add anything to it and he'll keep the rim on there. It's normally a little piece of steel running round in there and he'll rewrap it when I roll it over. He has a little machine that goes around and there will thing with a wheel on it, you know, and he'll, he'll stand it up there when it's done and roll it round. If we can get over to his workshop, the man's getting on in years now, uh, but if we can get over to his workshop, we'll go over there and have a look. Lovely chap. So this one here, for instance, I said she was probably one of the better quality ones that I'm going to have done up. So it's R. Cook & Co. Fenchurch Street. Fenchurch Street. They were, uh, you know, not the most well-known maker, but they weren't a bad maker at all. R. Cook & Co. Yeah. yeah. So these are just a few, what's it, they called them the yard of tin. There was a lot that was made of tin. And then given a brass coating. Brass, not necessarily copper. This one's got a little bit of interest, different mouthpiece. If you look at the mouthpieces on these, you can see the difference in size, look, can you? Quite dramatic difference in size. Yeah, when we look at those, even this great big long one there, it's no, you know, small, small, small. And these ones are much easier to blow because we're all bigger in, in stature. So this one here is quite a nice, quite a nice little one, yeah. Um, but again, it's, it really is crudely made. It's not a showpiece in any way, shape or form. You can see the stitching down there. They call it stitching, funny huh? Down here is where they put it together. That's the join with the solder polished off. But never done with any great skill or particularly. And these little ferrules put together. So this is a collapsible one. So you could take it apart and you could travel it, yeah? I did have, I've probably still got it somewhere, a leather case with one of these in. And um, 
there's a few other items in there we'll have to try and find it because it would be interesting but um when you learn to when you learn to play a lot of a lot of people would just have the mouthpiece you know detach this mouthpiece from the rest of it this one doesn't detach but you detach and you carry it around in your pocket now why would it ever be collapsible <laughs> well i don't know to be honest with you um but i would imagine this let's just say that fred de guard on a coach lived around the corner you know he wouldn't necessarily want to walk up the road with that great big long thing so he might fold it up and just stick it in his pocket but I, as I say, somewhere or the other, we've got a leather case, and uh, and some of these have got quite a nice tone, mellow tone, if you like. But I'm no, I'm no player of all. But the, these, these are just a few. One day we'll have a look at um, some better quality ones. I've got some with, um, if I can find them again, so much stuff. Um, it's all coming to light as we get time to have a look for it, you know, normally up in the loft or wherever, <laughs> in the artist room somewhere. So there's a little selection of ones, you know, all doing different things. So a ribbed one, stop it getting damaged. I mean, it hasn't stopped this belly from getting damaged here. This one is not of any great importance, not very good, very, very small mouthpiece on it. And this one as well. A lot of these were made... Um, just to hang up in pubs and show and they was popular for people to collect just like toby jugs and free ducks you know free duck you know i don't know what it was made of plaster of paris i mean ducks you know one small one one big one you're flying up the wall people used to hang on the wall it was all them things that come and go in fashion and, and copper and brass was reproduced a lot uh, you know a few years ago and people had it in their house in some form of decoration so uh, there's a lot that have that are not really weren't ever used, you know, commercially or used professionally in any way. And this one's quite nice. This one's quite genuine. But it wasn't, as I say, in, in this day you can see up here all these joins on it. It was never, never a beautiful showpiece. It was just someone. The fella that um, done this belonged to give it to me. Belonged to his his great granddad. Uh, and there's a photograph back in 18 something and there he is on his pony with this he had like a little sleeve it went down and when he came in I think I don't hold me to this but I think he was in Wells so when he was coming into the town he'd give a couple of sharp blasts on it and the note of this would be much different to a road coach you know quite a bit different and people would recognise that uh, that note and they'd gather up down the post office because that's where he'd be dropping all the letters off and there wouldn't be any set time for him to come, um, as people think there wouldn't. Co road coaches, mail coaches run to a very strict timetable. But uh, he didn't run in the same fashion because he picked up mail from somebody and would take it on to the next place. And then it would go on to the next place with another rider. So, you know, a bit like the Pony Express in America. So there's just a little few owls and we'll have a look one day at some good quality ones and perhaps we'll get someone to play one. Okay.